Hey everyone, I'm Rahi Patel, your curiosity correspondent. You all had such great and amazing questions for Dr. Ariel Ekba, and while she couldn't answer all of them, she did answer 14 of them. So I'm not gonna lie, this video is gonna be a little bit long, but her answers were great, and I hope you find them as interesting and inspiring as I did. Thank you, students of Nord Anglia. We were so impressed and so delighted to have over 2,000 students ask more than 4,000 questions for this challenge. I've been so intrigued by the types of questions that you asked, and we're looking forward to answering a few of them for you today. Hi, my name is Neve, and my question is, is it possible to play sports with balls? For example, basketball, baseball, and soccer because of the gravity. And how does it work? Hi, Neve. Thank you so much for your question. The short answer is yes, we absolutely can still play ball type sports in space. What might be a little bit different is on Earth, you probably learn to throw the ball in an arc. So you just kind of intuitively throw it up a little bit to get it to your friend who might be across the room. In space, because gravity's not there to pull it down as it's traveling through the air, you actually shoot it more like a dart, like straight to the person in front of you. Abby and Rowan from the British International School of Houston are asking, Hello, my team has been wondering if Velcro would work in space. Would it stick in low gravity? Also, is Velcro a useful tool to use to secure astronauts when performing exercises? Thanks. Hi, Abby and Rowan. It's a great question, something that we think about all the time for what are the types of Velcro that we could use in space. The answer is yes, Velcro is incredibly important and very prevalent in space missions. Astronauts use it for all kinds of things, from being able to Velcro you know, food packages to a particular storage area, or even you could wrap a pencil in Velcro and you know, Velcro it to the wall by where you're working. In terms of the, the hook and loop mechanism of Velcro, it's a really fantastic mechanism for adhering things in a space context. Lily from Collège Champité is asking, can we do the cartwheel in space with Velcro on hands and feet? Lily, I love this question. Yes, you absolutely can do cartwheels in space. Interestingly, the addition of the Velcro might make it more difficult. So if you were to want to do a Velcro type of uh, activity, it's going to really stick you even more than normal, right? Because you're not going to have the force of gravity otherwise pulling you down away and helping you get that momentum, that torque as you're transferring and making the cartwheel loop. So what I would recommend is to actually go sans Velcro and enjoy yourself. And what you would need to do is maybe have an astronaut help you or somebody to get your body spinning. And then you will be able to continue to spin and create that cartwheel loop on your own. Hi guys, it's me Felicia, Maria, Sophia, and we're all from WPS, also known as Winnie Mere Prep. So how does eating in the environment of space affect the taste of the foods eaten? Hello Sophia, Felicia, and Maria. This is one of the questions that is of incredible interest for NASA as we think about how to keep astronauts healthy and excited about their food for something like a long duration space mission to Mars. When you're floating in microgravity, a lot of the fluids in your body actually redistribute themselves and you'll find that your face is a little bit puffier, almost like you have a, a little bit of a cold. And what happens when you have a cold? It's hard to smell. You get a little bit of that loss of sense of smell. And astronauts often relate having the same thing. So they're struggling to find foods that are really pungent. So they like hot sauce or spicy foods, anything that can kind of break through that barrier to smelling normal food. Ashoka from Oak Ridge International School, Mohali, is asking, what is the present diet of astronauts aboard the International Space Station? What is the most important nutrient? Thank you for the question. The astronauts have a balanced diet, just like many other people. It's very important for them to be able to have a mix of different nutrients. So I think it would be hard for NASA to say which is the most important nutrient when the key here is really a healthy, balanced diet and moderation in all things. The types of foods that they eat tend to be freeze dried or dehydrated. And what they do is they cook them by adding water back in and then heating up these food packets in containers or packages that are quite a lot like MREs or meals ready to eat. Ben from British School of Nanjing is asking, how do we get food and water in space with no animals? Could we take farm animals into space? 
I love this question because it's something that a lot of us are thinking about for the sustainability of life and eating when we're thinking about things like far future space settlement. For the near term, we're not expecting to bring animals with us, but more likely to prepare the food that might come from an animal, but prepare it here on Earth and then package it and send it up into space. I think you also asked about water, and this is a very interesting challenge. We're looking for sources of water in the solar system that might be able to be mined. But for now, there's also lots of ways to reclaim water from wastewater. And so one of the technologies already aboard the International Space Station does take an approach at filtering clean water from water that's already on station or water byproducts. Hello, I'm Sky. And I'm Kiki. We both are in year seven at the British International School of Boston. And our question is, if you were to spin a piece of pottery in space, would the clay dry differently? And how would you make sure the pottery doesn't float away? Thank you for your time. Hi, Sky and Kiki. This is a fantastic question and something that really gets into the differences that we might see in a space environment. Inside the International Space Station, if you were working on a pottery project and if you were so lucky to have an oven, yes, it would probably dry similarly to how it would dry on the surface of the Earth. To keep it from floating away, one thing you could maybe do after you finish your drying process would be to add a little bit of Velcro on the bottom and stick it somewhere. Or if you're trying to think about how it would stay put while it's drying, maybe you could rig a net or some type of a set of strings to kind of keep it in a particular place while it's floating and drying. Rupal from Nord Anglia International School of Dublin is asking, how can you play music in space? For example, piano keys need to lift in order to produce sound. Does this apply to all musical instruments or just one or two? This is a very thoughtful question and it actually led our team a few years ago to try and design a new musical instrument that would work in a space environment. So you raise a very good point. A piano, for example, relies on the action of the hammers and the lifting of the keys. And of course, yes, that would not work in the same way in microgravity. And so it's a fantastic challenge for those of us who love music and want this in our lives to think about other types of sound making and music making that wouldn't rely on a gravity effect to have to take place, but could be more directly made, think like percussion or wind instruments or other mechanisms, even with sensor technology and maybe interpreting motion and movement of an object into a digitized song or a digitized sound. Aditya from Oak Ridge International School Mohali is asking, is there a particular type of paint that is needed in space? Everything floats up there. So how is painting possible, especially watercolors? What a wonderful question, because this really gets to the core of one of the things that we plan for in the space environment, which is how to handle fluids. In a zero gravity environment or a microgravity environment like the International Space Station, surface tension is going to dominate on that fluid. So it's going to want to make a perfect little sphere wherever there's a little drop of, of liquid. So the paint won't necessarily run away from you, but it may be a little bit harder to capture and will require you to really guide these droplets while floating from whatever source of liquid you have to the canvas. How do you take showers in space? Thanks, Ellie, for such a great question. So this is a great question and something that astronauts often say that they miss the most on the International Space Station. It's quite hard to take a shower. You can't rely on gravity to pull the water down from the shower head. And so a lot of what astronauts use for their time in orbit are wipes. So you can think like baby wipes or wipes that you might use after you exercise really heavily. And this is how they approach hygiene on the International Space Station. Hi, my name is Kit and can I ask you a question? What happens to human waste in space and do do they take care of it like, like trash? Hi, Kier. What an important question because human waste and handling it property, properly is of course very important for hygiene and also important for the sustainability of space missions going forward. For urine, we're actually able to filter back out certain elements of clean water from the urine. Now I have to say for human waste, I'm not an astronaut myself. I have flown on the Vomit Comet and we, we work on lots of space research, but this is a question I would have to research and I would have to look at what NASA really does do for the solid human waste. There are a couple different options for how they might treat this on the International Space Station. It's an interesting question and definitely worth a little bit of further investigation. 
According to NASA, human waste is discharged from the International Space Station and burns up in the Earth's atmosphere, looking just like shooting stars. Who knew that something could be so dazzling but gross at the same time? My name is Annie. I want to ask you a question. When you are in the ISS, how can you know when it's night or daytime? It's in the middle of nowhere. Anya, this is a fantastic question, one that we often think about for how to keep astronauts in tune with what we call our normal circadian rhythms, right? So humans have evolved to have a certain number of hours of darkness when we're sleeping, and then lightness really helps our bodies wake up and helps our metabolisms get going. On the International Space Station, the astronauts see many different sunrises and sunsets every day because they're orbiting around the Earth and it only takes about 90 minutes. They also have a mission computer that tells them not just the local time, say, on whatever the International Space Station is following, but also quite a lot of different time zones around the world where they might be working with different researchers or talking to Mission Control in Houston. Bola from British School of Warsaw is asking, can you tell me about some of the artifacts that you have created or designed at MIT for space? We love talking about this question because this is our bread and butter. This is what we're really passionate about doing. We work on self-assembling space architecture. We also think about the future of space food. If you've ever had boba or those little tea bubbles, the little tapioca bubbles, we're thinking about playful foods like that that would float in space. And then we even think about musical instruments and how can you play music and have recreational time and a pastime in space that's unique to this environment. Ewan from British International School of Abu Dhabi is asking, is the connection laggy, laggy and crackly, crackly when the astronauts are in space? Thank you, Ewan, for that question. This is a very good question and something that NASA and lots of different partners around the world, space agencies, often think about for the nature of communication. There is a very brief lag, even just between communication on the surface of the Earth and the International Space Station. It's not so bad, and so typically we're able to still have a very normal conversation. But when you think about communicating with a future astronaut who's traveled to Mars, the latency can be quite quite long, in the order of minutes. Hey, Mom. Hi, Rahi. Thank you, students of Nord Anglia, to everyone who submitted a question. We were so excited to see all of these wonderful ideas and questions come in, and good luck to you all.